Hi, it's Mr. Wasserman, and we are once again looking at measuring insects to the fraction of an inch. Uh, we are in our math journals, pages 264 through 267. Now, in a previous video, I described how to measure the insects to the nearest eighth of an inch and then collect that data. I am now going to use that data that I've collected with the line plot graph to answer some questions. So let's jump right in. So let's take a look at some of the questions. It says here at the top, use the completed line plot on journal page 266 to answer the questions below. So in order to answer any of these questions, you have to have all this data completed in your um, in your table and then on your line plot graph. Okay, so let's disseminate some of this information. Okay, number one has some variables because it asks you about your favorite insects, your least favorite insects. Uh, so we're just going to skip that and we're going to jump to number two. How many insects are one and six eighths inches long? Now, in order to figure that out, we have to look at the table. And so I'm going to look at 1 and 6 eighths inches on my line plot graph. And I can see that there are three X's, so that means there are three different insects. The short-tailed dusk darter dragonfly, the Carolina mantid, and the katydid. So all I have to do is for problem number 2A, I just have to write in 3. Now, how many insects are 7 eighths inches long? Well, again, as I consult the table, I see that there are two. Looks like it's the ground beetle and the southeastern field cricket. So that's pretty straightforward. All I'm doing is I'm looking at a chart, and I'm plotting in the information. Okay? Now, 2C is a little bit different. It asks us, what's the difference between these two measurements? Now, difference is just a code word for subtract. So what I need to do is set up a subtraction problem, subtracting 1 and 6 eighths minus 7 eighths. So I'm going to set the problem vertically. 1 and 6 eighths minus 7 eighths. Now, a couple of things about subtracting mixed numbers. Uh, number one, we are only going to be concentrating on the top number, the numerator, because the denominators are the same. Now, if we had a problem where the denominators were different, that would be another story. But since the denominators are eighths, we can just ignore those numbers. So right now what I'm doing here is looking at my fraction place value, I want to subtract 6 minus 7. I can't do that because 6 is too small. So I would have to borrow. So I'm going to treat this problem just like it's a multi-digit uh, subtraction problem. But my uh, place value to the left is whole number. So I have this number 1, okay? So i got to ask myself, what's another way of thinking about one whole? Well, if I divide something into 8 parts, each part is an eighth. And if I have one whole, uh, that a uh, whole it has eight eighths. It's kind of like thinking about a pizza. Okay, if you, when you get that pizza, and it's pre-sliced by the pizzeria, it's got eight slices. If all the slices are still there, you still have one whole pizza. Okay, so one whole is the equivalent to eight eighths. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add my eight eighths to my 6 eighths. So I'm going to take that whole number, break that down, I'm going to lend it to my fractional place value. So I'm going to add 6 eighths to 8 eighths. Well, 6 plus 8 is 14. So now I'm going to subtract 14 eighths minus 7 eighths. Of course, 14 minus 7 gives us 7. So how much bigger is the first measurement compared to the second, well, it's 7 eighths inches bigger. That's the difference. 
Now, whenever I'm presented with a subtraction problem, and I'm not sure about the answer, I can always use addition to check. So I could take a look at my second number, 7 eighths, and my answer for my subtraction problem, which was also 7 eighths. And if I were to add 7 eighths plus 7 eighths, I would get a sum of 14 eighths. That's right, because I'm only adding the numerators. And of course, when I have a improper fraction like 14 eighths, I need to figure out how many groups of whole numbers I can get out of that. So I would divide to see how many groups of 8 eighths I can get out of 14. Well, I can get one group because 1 times 8 is 8. And if I subtract the difference, 14 minus 8, well, look at that. You get 6. So how many groups of 8 can I get out of 14? Well, I can get one group with a remainder of 6 eighths. So that proves that my answer works. Let's take a look at one more problem. Uh, I'm going to jump. Uh, I'm going to jump to, oh, let's say, number 6. What is the measure of the shortest insects? What's the measure? So again, I gotta look at my oops. I gotta look at my table. And I gotta look at my line plot graph. Well the shortest insects are three eighths. The boreal firefly, the ladybug, and the Indian meal moth. So I'm gonna put that in measurement. Three eighths over here. The second part of that question asks how many insects have this measure? Well, there were three of them. And what is their combined length? Now, combined is another word that tells us to add, to combine, to put together. So, I can approach this one of two ways. So, there are three insects that are three-eighths inches long. So, how do I combine them? Well, I can either add them together or I can multiply them. But I'm going to set up both approaches. So, let's start with an addition problem. 3 eighths plus 3 eighths plus 3 eighths. So if I add 3 eighths to itself 3 times, I'm again just adding the numerators, 3 plus 3 plus 3, and that's going to give me 9 eighths. Okay, now if I set this up as a multiplication problem, 3 times 3 eighths, when I multiply, I am just going to multiply the whole number times the numerator. So again, 3 groups of 3 eighths, that's going to give me 9 eighths. Now another way of thinking about 9 eighths is to convert it into a mixed number. And just by looking at the 9 compared to the 8, I know that I can get at least one group of 8 eighths out of 9, because 9 minus 8 is 1, so 9 eighths can be represented as 1 and 1 eighth. So, what is their combined length? Well, either 9 eighths of an inch, or you could represent them as 1 and 1 eighth. And that's how you would solve that problem, or that set of problems. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to your math teacher. Otherwise, we'll talk again soon. Thanks.